भद्रम पश्य मक्षभ्यजत्रंगुष्टुवागो सस्तनो व्यशेम देवित यदायु स्वस्ति न इंद्रो वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्ति नूषा विश्वेदा स्वस्ति नक्षो अरिष्टने स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दा यत्परं ब्रह्म सर्वात्मा विश्वस्यायतन महत् सूक्ष्मतरम निमेवत्मेवत स्वप्न सुषुप्यादि प्रपंचम यकाशते तद्रह्मी ज्ञाबंध प्रमुच्य त्रिषु धामसु योग्यम भोक्ता भोगश्च ये तेभ्यो विलक्षण साक्षी चिन्मात्रो हम सदा शिव मय्य सकल जात मयि सर्व प्रति मयि सर्व लय याति तद्रह्मस्म अणोरणीय तद्वन्मान हम विश्वहम विचि पुरातनोहम पुषोहमीशो हिण्मयोहम शिव रूपमस्मी अदोहम चिंत शक्ति पश्याम्य चक्षुस्स शुण्य कर्ण अहम विजानी विरिक्तो न चास्ति वेत्ता मम चित् सदाहम वेदरनेकमे वेद्यो वेदातृद्वेद विदेव चाहम न पुण्य पापे मम नास्ति नाशो न जन्म देहेन्द्रिय बुद्धिस्ते न भूमिरापो न चन्नी न चा नीलो मेस्ति न चाबरम च परमात्म गुहाशय निष्कमीय समस्त साक्षि सद सदीन प्रयाति शुद्ध परमात्म यशतरुद्रीयमधीते सौमिपूत सुरापात् ब्रह्म हत्यापूत कृत्यात्त तस्मादिमुक्तमाश्रिश्रमी सर्वदा सकृवा जपे अने ज्ञानमाति संसारावनाशन तस्मा विदिवैनम कैवल्यम फलमश्नुते कैवल्यम फलमश्नुत फ्रम दिस द सपोर्ट ऑफ द यूनिवर्स अरइस प्राण वैटल एर मैंड all sense organs space air fire water and earth as we discussed in the last class this mantra essentially says that all forms of manifestation creation emerges from the ultimate reality the ultimate reality has the potential of manifestation inherent in it that manifests as the subtle world and the gross world the subtle and the gross elements or the subtle and the gross aspects of the elements manifest to form this universe where there is a subject object relationship from each and every individual's point of view so from the 
అబ్సల్యూట్ రియాలిటీ వి సెట్ దట్ దిస్ మంత్ర హ్యాస్ ప్యారలల్ ఇన్ ముంటక ఉపనిషత్ వర్బాటిన్ ద సేమ్ మంత్ర కమ్స్ అండ్ ఇన్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయినింగ్ ద థియరీ ఆఫ్ క్రియేషన్ ఇన్ అనదర్ వే వాట్ కమ్స్ దేర్ ఇస్ వాట్ ఎమర్జెస్ ఫ్రమ్ బ్రహ్మన్ ఈ సేస్ ఇస్ అన్నం ఫ్రమ్ అన్నం కమ్స్ ఆల్ దీస్ థింగ్స్ సో అన్నం విచ్ ఇస్ ఫుడ్ విచ్ కెన్ బీ గ్రాస్లీ టేకన్ యాజ్ ఫుడ్ దట్ విచ్ సస్టైన్స్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ దట్ విచ్ సస్టైన్స్ లైఫ్ ప్రాణ కమ్స్ నెక్స్ట్ విచ్ ఇస్ లైఫ్ అండ్ ఫ్రమ్ దట్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ ఇస్ సస్టైన్ ఇన్ దట్ సెన్స్ ఇట్ కెన్ బీ టేకన్ బట్ వాట్ ఇట్ రెఫర్స్ టు ఫ్రమ్ ద అల్టిమేట్ పాయింట్ ఆఫ్ వ్యూ ఆఫ్ క్రియేషన్ ఎస్ అన్నం రెఫర్స్ టు ది మ్యాటర్ మ్యాటర్ ఆర్ ప్రకృతి దట్ ఈస్ ది ఫస్ట్ థింగ్ దట్ ఎమర్జెస్ యాజ్ ఇట్ వెర్ వాట్ ఇట్ ఎమర్జెస్ మీన్స్ దట్ ఈస్ ఎ ఇన్హెరెంట్ ప్రిన్సిపల్ ఇన్ ఇట్ దట్ ఇన్హెరెంట్ ప్రిన్సిపల్ మ్యానిఫెస్ట్ ఇట్ సెల్ఫ్ యాజ్ బోత్ సటల్ అండ్ గ్రాస్ వాట్ వీ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ ఇస్ ద స్థూల ప్రపంచం ఆర్ ది గ్రాస్ వర్ల్డ్ గ్రాస్ యూనివర్స్ who experiences this is the individual who is made up of the instruments which is inside him which is sukshma which is subtle body this gross body and subtle body are all made up of the elements the five elements that is why this universe is called as prapancham pancham refers to these five elements prapancham refers to these absolute five elements which make up this universe when they manifest by themselves in pure form they form the equipments that are within us in the subtle body so all this we have dealt in detail when we dealt with the aspects of this uh, when the concepts from tatva bodha were uh, discussed later we when we do atma bodha maybe it will come up again just to summarize quickly the five organs of perception which is the pancha indriyani what he said here comes from each of the sattvic aspects of the, each of the five elements like the indriya of the ear comes from the space the indriya of the skin comes from the air the indriya of eye comes from fire the indriya of tongue comes from uh, water and the indriya of the nose comes from earth and then in the totality form the sattvic aspect of the five elements constitute the subtle body which manifest themselves as mind intellect ego and the chit which is the seat of memory the conditioned consciousness which is the seat of memory so these are all the sattvic aspect of the elements which manifest the rajasic aspect of the elements manifest as each of them again separately as the each of the five karmendriyas and then you have the combined form or the samashti form which manifests as the pranas the pranas being one but function with reference to five different physiological functions so the manifestation can be taken as pancha prana also in the five ways in which the pranas manifest this is the sattvic aspect and the rajasic aspect of the elements which manifest in the subtle body which is the instrument of experience the gross body which is the object uh, which is the headquarters of all experience from the individual point of view and all the objects of experience which is there in the external world are all made up of the same elements in the grossified form so the tamasic aspect of these five elements they combine together to become impure impure in the sense they are not in their pure absolute state not in their nascent state they become secondary here they become impure by the process called as panchikarana by this process they become the five different elements here so each of the elements that uh, the gross body is made up of and each of the elements that is being experienced in the outside world by this gross body is not in their pure nature so in other words the space that we see has other elements also combined in it 50% is what is the percentage given Fif- space is 50% other 50% is equally made up of the other four elements similarly water that we see is not 
100 percent pure water in what is in the original form. It is 50 percent water, and other 50 percent is made up of the other four elements. This is the process of the panchi karana. The same way is also our gross body is made up of. Th- so when we say, uh, let's say blood and uh, urine and other flowing material that are there within us, they are all aspects of water. But it is not pure water. Other things are mixed in it. Similarly, you have fire within our body, which let's say the digestive uh, f- fire is there, the jatara agni is there. All these are aspects of fire in the body. Similarly, there are aspects of air in us, aspects of space in us, aspects of solid uh, earth in us, the bone. These are the aspects of earth in us. So, all this, which is the spontaneous creation, simultaneously creating the individual and the world, constantly in touch with each other in relationship of experience, all of this emerges from that. that. So, the focus is not what has come out of it. The focus is from where it has come out. Yetasma jayate. He says, from this everything has come. From this means from this what is described in the previous mantra as that which is the adharam, that which is the substratum, that which is the anandam, that which is the absolute bliss, akhanda bodham, that unbroken consciousness. From that arises all these things and as we said, this mantra beautifully also captures the order or the sequence. It gives us subtle in that same sequence of from subtle to gross, prana, mana, indriya. And then in the gross also it gives in the same sequence as kam, vayu, uh, jyoti, apa, prithivi, space, air, fire, water, earth. In terms of how much ever the number of sense organs contact that also determines what is subtle and what is gross. So, we said the space is the subtlest and the earth is the grossest. Also, in terms of pervasiveness, in terms of pervasiveness also, what pervades everything more is the subtlest. In that angle also, if you see, the same thing will fit in. That space, air, fire, water and earth. From this, the support of the universe arise, prana, vital air, mind, all sense organs, space, air, fire, water and earth. Yes, sir. So, in a self-realized person, all the five elements become pure? When you talk about self-realized person, you are still uh, uh, visualizing or understanding with reference to personality. With reference to the absolute unmanifest reality or Brahman, See, in the previous mantra, he says, Yasmin layam yati puratrayam cha. Where everything finally goes back and gets merged, in that state, everything becomes pure. That is why we have this um, beautiful symbolism of this in a picture of a Hindu god Mahavishnu lying in the um, serpent. And that serpent has five hoods which are pointing towards him as it were. Uh, So, what it means is, in that state where, that is the state of that Ishwara being in his absolute way, where the the power of manifestation, the power of Maya is there, but it is there inherent, withdrawn in him, in which time all the elements which were manifest till now has also been withdrawn. So, when it is withdrawn inside, they again go back into that pure state. When they manifest outside, they come back again and when then the gross thing, they come to that uh, the form that we experience now. So, you, when it goes and touches or merges back into that reality, they attain that pure state again. So, this is the cycle of manifestation and unmanifestation here. As far as the self-realized person is concerned, he has merged with that unconditioned pure consciousness. For him, there is no question of this uh, elements, there is no question of all this uh, you know, uh, manifestation, unmanifestation, creation, all these things have no direct impact or connection upon him. He has just become that pure consciousness in its purest form. That's about all. There's no other features there. From his point of view, again we are saying from his point of view, he has crossed what is known as Maya. So, this cycle that is happening is from our point of view because we are still caught up in this cycle. That's why it is. So, therefore, that Maya which is all-powerful entity, which is a power of Brahman, which has the capacity to manifest itself like this 
and which has the capacity to withdraw itself like this is inherent in brahman so you should not be confused with the self realized person sir i did not understand when you said that the sattvic uh, uh part of the elements uh, the comes as the gyanendriya uh, and the rajasik comes as the karmendriya how where does the tamasic aspect come the gross body that gross comes body as the gross body is the, okay. that is what the tamasic element breaks and recombines to form the gross Uh, aspect of the tamasic elements the combination of which is the gross body that is why there is no uh, individual tamasic air or tamasic space something like that because it goes through the process of panchikarana so it is becoming the gross body and everything so when you I, I understand this gross body any other matter that is there in the world that we experience is it any different from this matter that we are having it's no so the entire gross world that we see is a manifestation of that only so both uh, sthula and sukshma is the entirety of sattva rajas and tamas in totality and this sattva rajas tamas is the uh, inherent gunas in the maya that's all so when we talk about the pure uh, we talk about when everything comes together and then get get back to the pure the pure is a combination of all the three pure cannot be understood as combination because in the pure only consciousness exists it is there in the maya in its inherent state so there is no question of understanding them separately there the separation comes only in the manifestation through ignorance because the source is the ignorance for three ignorance comes under the point of view of individual i am talking about the entire creation itself when it comes out uh, the manifestation of maya which is coming out as these elements only then all this segregation of sattva rajas tamas and purity impurity everything comes from your point of view it is called ignorance that's all the individual is <coughs> overpowered by the maya therefore he is not uh, aware of the self in its pure form therefore it's called as ignorance just only yeah so your earth i'm sure don't mean literally the planet earth it means the universe earth means the solid aspect of what you see in the earth what is mars So is it is it only the planet Earth or the entire? That's what I'm saying. Ma- Mars. How would you how would you understand it in terms of elements? Is it uh, is it water or is it space? In space, there is something. All those elements which are solid in substance, uh, in this format, that is called as Earth here. Earth. See, when you say he picked up Earth, means soil, right? That means that which is the solid gross matter. So in general, I am saying I am not equating to this. Uh, uh you know point to point with science that which is all in solid matter is earth that which is all in liquid matter is uh water that which is all in gaseous state is air that which is all in uh, energy form is fire that which is housing all these things is the space so there is a correspondence there so all the aspects which are in that uh, solid mass. Uh, mass in a very tangible way all that is coming under earth So can we say that all the non-living things are only tamasic element to them? I mean, the objects of the world, like stones and all these things, because they don't have, uh, I think, uh, prana and uh, other bodies. So we can say that only it's only a tamasic creation apart from the. In other words, when we talk about the manifestation of the entire prapancha as the uh, manifestation of the tamasic aspect of the five elements. Uh, therefore including this gross body everything that is there is a manifestation of that so obviously it is only uh, tamas that is why it doesn't move at all if at all you want to bring it under gunas it has to be tamasic mantra 16 we'll chant twice yat param brahma sarvatma vishvasya yatanam mahat that which is supreme brahman the self in all great support of the universe subtler than the subtle eternal that alone the what 
that alone thou art this mantra is not probably giving any extra information or fact from what is already covered or it may give in but in very general way but this mantra has to be more absorbed at the level of our feeling it gives out that staggering truth which statements you will find only in upanishads in the vedanta treatise the last chapter the last chapter is the culmination of the book where the author wants to emphasize the ultimate truth of vedanta which is that the art tattvamasi tattvamasi is considered one of the maha vakyas maha vakya uh, is like a great commandment great statement there are very many statements in upanishads like that very pithy crisp and all these statements are directly pointing out to brahman and with reference to the individual's unity with brahman of these the four statements are considered the most important or most authentic for whatever reason we do not know or probably they also form the crux of each of the four vedas after they are codified maybe because of that also because in let's say uh, taitri upanishad satyam gnana anantam brahma comes that is also a very fabulous and off quoted statement it is like one of the great statements only but these four statements are considered very powerful because uh, it is talking from the point of view of the direct definition of what that supreme brahman or consciousness is and then how a seeker is able to relate to it and finally reach it also practice it and reach it so therefore the first statement pragnanam brahma which comes in the aitri upanishad of rigveda it talks about what exactly is brahman there is a lakshana lakshana vakya it is called because it is like a definition though brahman cannot be defined this is the closest or this is sort of pinpointing as to what it is that it says it is pragnanam it is absolute pure consciousness consciousness is brahman is the first uh, vakya when you say first the order in terms of how we can proceed so this is coming in the aitri upanishad and second is the most famous of all which comes in the samaveda in chandogya upanishad as tattvamasi tattvamasi means that thou art so this supreme brahman what it is when this statement is asked by a student to the guru he is giving it as a lesson as an advice that what you are asking about that essentially you are that tat tvamasi so exactly the same words is used here tat tvameva tvameva tat before that he is giving yat yat means that which is he is giving some explanation and saying that is what you are you are essentially that tat tvameva i don't know how we can bring it out the spirit in english and swami ji has you know done a wonderful job in bringing it as close as possible in english in translation you will find in spirit both geeta and upanishad Uh, versus translation it is as close as you can get but certain things that you understand in indian languages uh it has to be felt and absorbed that only what do you say that in hindi tomeva tumi ho something like that it is like that tomeva here he says that alone the word the conjunction is with the word uh, tvam here but it cannot be done in english probably though he said that alone the word you know it gives that effect it gives that spirit so he is saying that that alone is you man you are that alone that that spirit alone that is you actually that is essentially you you know that is the meaning that he is trying to bring here and then uh, in the atharvana veda in the mandukya upanishad the statement i am atma brahma comes i am atma brahma is a uh, abhyasa vakya so first we had lakshana vakya then upadesha vakya now abhyasa vakya that means the the student gets the upadesha from the guru and then he practices so i am atma brahma means this atma is brahma 
this atma is brahman this is a constant anusandhan or a repetition repetition is not a mechanical repetition a constant thought flow with feeling where he is able to absorb that internally in and through all the practices he is able to remember this in his consciousness so that is the practice so the practice is what i consider myself as an individual the essential atma within me is the same brahma atman is brahman this is the practice and then finally in the yajurveda again a famous statement comes in the brihadaranyaka upanishad that aham brahmasmi aham brahmasmi means i am brahman i am brahman comes out of a mouth of a realized person who is in that state of absolute consciousness he is realized so it is called as a anubhava vakya anubhava vakya is a statement of experience so these are the four statements which talk about the unity of uh, individuality and brahman and establishes uh, the brahman in totality that statement is coming here and emphasized twice to make us understand that really you are this so as such as i said this mantra has to be felt it has to be experienced this has to be imbibed within us with that feeling there is uh, uh, of course there is greater things given here for contemplation but it is a combination of that feeling that is going to give us the essence of this mantra he says tatvameva tatvameva that which you are seeking that which you are understanding that which you are asking because essentially ashwalayana came in the beginning to brahma to ask about that which is the brahma vidya so that culmination comes here in the in this in fact this mantra ends the third topic topic means this topic is not in the original uh, upanishad like this for easier study uh, swami ji has uh, uh, divided that into topics so that each topic conveys a particular thought flow leading to the next topic like that in geeta also he has done it so in this topic finally culminates in this point that you are essentially that tatvameva tatvameva so like that it is so this mantra has to be experienced that way right now he says yat param brahma that which is supreme brahman that which is supreme brahman means supreme brahman is the ultimate there is no other word beyond it there there's no other concept beyond it there is nothing it is uh, in fact the term brahma itself means brahman itself means brihattamatvat that which is the biggest biggest means what see when you say biggest in english it's an adjective how can adjective be alone when you say biggest tower you can say or biggest car biggest person so biggest is something which will qualify something else but this is an unqualified biggest in fact if you understand like this only even the term allahu akbar makes sense allahu akbar means god is great i do not know the um, grammar so we do not know whether it is given as the greatest or great or greater anything like that but they deal with uh, god only from the transcendental point of view which is the biggest which is the grandest which is the most beyond everything like that it is so that meaning is understood as that 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 means that which is far off from everything that which is the overall you know um all pervading entity which is there everywhere that sort of a bigness which uh, we cannot conceive so that bigness is left for our imagination at that point so that biggest as it were which is the essential uh, meaning of the root from where this word brahman comes is to be left as it is it cannot be understood it is called as param brahma yet param brahma that immediately he so can i say the transcendent ha ah, it is transcendental it is transcendental but that is why it is in our understanding it is just not transcendental the supreme brahman is not transcendental alone it is immanent also immanent means that which is outer to everything that which is beyond everything that which encompasses everything is also within everything so that which is within me is called as immanent that is why the next word he says yat param brahma sarvatma sarvatma is the atma within all sarvatma so the word atma is also given so when we use the word atma it is understanding that same supreme reality consciousness god whatever you call from the microcosmic point of view the point of view only it is still the same infinite and when you talk about brahman or brahma 
it is talking about the same supreme consciousness infinite entity from the macrocosmic point of view it is just our point of view remember infinity has no microcosm or macrocosm it is the same infinity it is beyond all descriptions and this thing when we use the term atma therefore it is referring to that consciousness within an individual so yet param brahma that which is we will come back to the sarvatma then he qualifies by saying that magnificence which is the transcendental reality which we really cannot conceive it is all uh, leading to what is known as a infinite factor infinite is beyond our intellect therefore we cannot conceive that infinite factor maximum we can even try and understand the, not understand the concept of infinity we can relate to that infinity from what we experience as the time space and causation factors in the universe what vedanta says is this time space and causation factors which constitute the universe have got that infinity quality upon them which is correct is nothing but the reflection or projection of the infinite brahman which is so what is being projected out of brahman which is this universe has gained that infinite stature because the originality <coughs> is actually infinite so when you keep a mirror and you see the sky which is reflected inside the mirror what is the size of the sky you will say that sky is also infinite oh here is one sky which is infinite there is another sky which is infinite no there are no two infinities infinities cannot be two it is only one infinity that infinity reflects itself here similarly what has come out as projection in that the same infinity reflects its its quality and that infinity is reflected as eternity in time eternity means it goes forwards and backwards without any end without any beginning which goes as all pervasive nature in space without any end in any direction that is in space and without any end to the chain of cause and effect relationship in causality all these three things which point out to that infinite have essentially got their infinite nature from brahman so that is what is he has given here we can derive that nityam eternal eternal means it is that which is there always and that is which is so therefore it is that which is beyond time sukshmat sukshmataram we saw in the previous mantra that there is a order that is given and in the order of the elements the subtlest is the space so what is subtler than the subtle that is this only finally when you talk about creation of space there must be also a dissolution of space so there must be some entity to into which this goes and merges so that must be really all pervading than this so sukshma sukshmataram is subtler than the subtle points out to the all pervasive nature of brahman which is greater than space then from the causation point of view vishvasyayatanam mahat it is the great support of the universe support here means what is known as the ultimate material cause support is not like how just this table supports the uh, the ganesha murti who is standing here or the phone or the uh, time piece that is here it is to be understood in terms of how ocean supports the wave so wave is not a burden upon the ocean like that a very minute disturbance which is in the top which is called as wave is also essentially the ocean while it is in the form of wave also which the wave may, may not know but it is still essentially the same material so the material cause can be taken as that support so ultimately you take the cause and effect relationship into everything that which is beyond all the uh, cause and effect that which is beyond all causation is also the same brahman so yet param brahma which is nityam which is eternal which is sukshmat sukshmataram which is subtler than the subtle which is vishvasya ayatanam mahat it's a great support he says mahat mahat ayatanam great support of the universe therefore the ultimate material now look upon the same three from the microcosmic point of view what is actually nityam in us what is actually subtler than the subtle within us what is actually the supporter of everything in us all that will point out to that same i 
Nityam is that which is there at all points of time. So what is there at all points of time always within us? It is I. When you go through the waking state also you refer to as I. In the dream state also you refer to as I. In deep sleep state also it is I. Though you, there is no conversation or no reference at that point of time. When you wake up you say I slept peacefully. So there is a connection of I in the deep sleep state also. So that I never leaves you at any point of time. So, but what you call yourself as Gupta or somebody else X, that is not eternal. Even in our life's experience, when you go into dream, you may dream as some other person who is not Gupta. So, therefore, that is no eternity. In deep sleep, somebody may call your name, you don't respond at all because you believe yourself to be nothing at that point of time. Zero. Blankness. So, therefore, that is not uh, Nityam. Any, any of the other things is not Nityam. But what is Nityam is that which continues in and through all these things. That is Nityam. That Nityam is nothing but our own I. Which is ultimately what that I is, we will see. But the I is what we refer to that. That I is not this body. Because all this body and the manifestation, even mind, everything goes away in deep sleep. So, something apart from all these things is there. That is what we refer to as I. Now, Sukshmat Sukshmataram. Sukshmat Sukshmataram from macrocosmic point of view is that which is subtler than the subtle. So, when we look at the individual from the point of view of the equipments that he has or the koshas that he is made up of, the layers that he is made up of, there are various koshas which constitute the gross, subtle and the causal body. So, the gross body is made up of food, therefore it is called food sheath. Food sheath is uh, the outer body that we see because it is born out of food. It is sustained by food and ultimately it becomes food for other beings. So it is food. Everything associated with this body is food. So therefore it is called as Annamaya. This Annamaya inside that is another kosha called as Pranamaya. That Pranamaya is subtler than Annamaya. Pranamaya is the kosha which is the connection between this food sheath and the subtle body. It is part of subtle body, but that is what it connects to the gross body. Like in the computer, the CPU, all the external chips, all those things that you see, the keyboard, the mouse, the monitor, all these things are part of the Annamaya or the gross. That is the gross expression. And then there is a subtle expression which actually makes the computer like a living being. When I say living being, understand the uh, scope of the example. It is functional. So, what is that which makes it functional is the software. It is the programs. All those programs, you cannot uh, see it in the gross form. Of course, you see something written on the screen. That is not actually the program. Program is the effect of it which is functioning internally in the computer. That is the subtle body. All this becomes functional when there is a connecting battery between these two, right? That battery is the prana. That battery is the prana. So, here the prana manifests itself as the physiological functions and uh, it is subtler because it is more pervasive and it is controlling the body. Prana functions which are physiological functions have a direct impact on the body. So, they are more pervasive and more controlling. It is more subtler. Subtler than the prana is the mind, manomaya. Mind is the seat of emotions. Mind uh, pervades even beyond the body. Mind will go uh, everywhere. It will go wherever, whatever you think of in terms of emotions. It impacts the other person also. Like that it is. That mind uh, is controlling the prana and the gross body. The mind is pervading all these things. So, it is subtler than that. And beyond mind, Vedanta says there is another sheath called Vijnanamaya. Vijnanamaya is the sheath of intellect. That intellectual sheath is the seat of uh, your reason. It is that intellect which can control even the mind. It is a conscious thought flow. And it is more pervasive than the mind because intellect can go into unknown realms also. It can probe into reality also which the mind by itself cannot go. Once the intellect shows the direction, then the mind can start feeling that way. So, that is even more subtler. 
what is beyond all these things we don't know that is the state of anandamaya kosha where all these things goes into unmanifest where the thought comes for the intellect also we don't know there is some source where it all goes into from where it is all coming out and that state is experienced in the causal body level as ananda as sukha as absolute peace during our deep sleep that is ananda now beyond all these things is that supreme i which is owning all these sheets so that which is subtler than the subtlest it according to the rule of subtlety we say that it has to control everything it has to pervade everything so i pervades the deep sleep it pervades the dream and the waking world also it pervades all the five sheets it pervades the body mind intellect everything therefore it is all pervasive and because of the switch of consciousness which is always on that all these things function the movement of our personality from deep sleep to dream to waking and that going up and down manifestation and unmanifestation also happens because of the existence of atma says swami ram tirtha just as presence of the sun makes everything happen in the world what does sun do sun doesn't do anything it just stays there but the very presence of the sun very power of the sun makes everything happen so it is the power of the atma which drives us from one state to the other state and back to the state like that he says so what is actually controlling everything what is actually making everything happen without really directly participating in it that is this so you go in from microcosmic point of view that which is sukshma sukshmataram is actually the same i and then he says uh, <coughs> vishvasya ayatanam like aadharam that supporter that supporter is also this i i in the sense um each and everything in this universe what he had given in the previous mantra also one is bigger than the other one is subtler than the other so we saw that uh, the water is subtler than the earth the fire is subtler than water like that the uh, thing goes then what is subtler than space oh really i don't know what is subtler than space because maximum we can conceive of is space that's about all space houses everything what is beyond space you say i don't know you are right that don't know that ignorance is probably that which is beyond space your ignorance but it doesn't stop there ignorance is not our powerful when you say i don't know that don't know doesn't hang in the vacant air like that the don't know also has the base of i so that conscious entity is the substratum of both your knowledge and ignorance so that which is the substratum of everything finally is that i principle only so this i principle which is understood from macrocosmic point of view as nityam as sukshma sukshmataram as vishvasya ayatanam is actually essentially what he has given this mantra as sarvatma that is nothing but your own atma this is the staggering truth i mean this is what we really need to get into the spirit of the mantra see that which is all powerful that which is beyond everything that which is you know essentially entire universe finally he narrows it down and boils it down to say that that is actually essentially you this is a statement probably we will not be able to comprehend we will not be able to understand it really doesn't matter at least we must uh, spend some time just you know uh, reveling in the staggering magnitude of that statement that's all it is that is why we always said it is a person who is at the level of a upanishadic student who can relate to upanishadic statements also right or wrong we don't know we have taken up the study and we are doing it but as i said it is not a mere intellectual understanding of this it is not to derive all these things in the form of equation only it is to get into that feeling of that uh, ashcharya that absolute uh, state of uh, ecstasy where he finally <coughs> says this sarvatma this is the atma in each and every being because all this which is there can be reached can be contacted through the atma within you go within yourself and find it out that is the sarvatma and secondly the sarvatma bhava is finally uh, the the sadhana also towards reaching it go back to mantra 10 where he is talking about uh, where you see self in other beings and other beings in the self there is no other way for uh, salvation where he says that 
this is called as sarvatma bhava sarvatma bhava means the atma that is within me is the same atma within others also so therefore it helps us reduce the resistance in others so that essentially which is within us upon uh, with which we can identify that is what is going to reach us towards that supreme self so he says that which is the supreme brahman is ultimately sarvatma and he ends up by saying tatvameva tvameva tat you are essentially that you are essentially that so what it means actually the human being in the meaning what it means to us in the present level is that our identification has been with uh, the material equipments all along it has been predominated by our thought flow focused on our body mind and intellect which forms the essential ego and this he has given in the previous mantras punascha janmantra karma yoga very many janmas before we have got this attachment and it is carrying through but only as a human being we have got a chance to direct our attention either to the material equipments or to the uh, spirit either you can focus just only on matter or we have a chance to focus on the spirit when you try to focus on the spirit and you become the spiritual person only then you reach that so this mantra 16 which concludes the topic 3 which says realize that the what is making a declaration the next topic which is from mantra 17 to 21 these five mantras it is talking about realize that the what realize i am brahman realize that i am brahman so he is giving the ways and method by which you are going to do this as a practice and establish he has already given certain sadhana from in the first uh, topic itself but but having given this overall knowledge as to what is this totality of brahman and having established that you are essentially that now he says practice that i am brahman by practicing i am brahman you are going to ultimately reach that state of brahman that which is the supreme brahman the self in all great support of the universe subtler than the subtle eternal that alone the what that alone the what we'll chant mantra 17 twice jagrat swapna sushuptyade prapancham yat prakashate tad brahma hamite gnatva sarva bandai pramuchyate jagrat swapna sushuptyade prapancham yat prakashate tad brahma hamite gnatva sarva bandai pramuchyate that which illumines the world of waking dream deep sleep etc that brahman am i thus realizing oneness liberated from all bonds i was uh, going through the notes of uh, this mantra when swami ji was taking kaivalya class in our uh, cycle when we did the course in the academy so that was in <coughs> 98 or 99 98 and or 99 it was so he was uh, not really explaining this verse but that one whole class he was explaining about only what uh what we really lack in the in, in other words in this mantra the last uh, portion says sarva bandai pramuchyate you are liberated from all bonds so he says tatvamasi its the statement is given you are that you are that supreme but forget about that anusandhan forget about that remembering and trying to practice or something just that realization even for a few minutes or even to understand it at uh, the level of the intellect and sustain that thought it just doesn't stay with us or gel with us meaning we may understand it intellectually we will connect to it when we come to a upanishad class or when we read upanishad or something like that 
and still it is there at the level of the analysis it is still there at the level of understanding which is fine which is also a part of it but that uh, leave everything and then standing in that standpoint that really doesn't occur so he said forget even that to even believe yourself to be not what you believe yourself to be now to believe yourself to be not mr x that you believe yourself to be now actually that is also too much because our ego needs something to hold on to and here the upanishad is giving a very direct uh, hit on the head it is actually some people say who have sort of obviously misunderstood they say that uh, this saying that i am the self or you are the self that to me all these statements are given as a um, it's a way of hypnotizing but the masters actually what they are doing is dehypnotizing dehypnotizing is to make a person come out of the hypnotic state and what is that hypnotic state is to believe that i am this ego i am this body mind and intellect since it is very firmly rooted in us this attachment towards this body over many many janmas this has come we firmly believe this is what it is to say that i am not this there is a insecurity there meaning if mind has nothing to get itself attached to where will it fall on so there is nothing else so it is not uh, easy so to forget i am the self to even imagine that i am not this person who is sitting here i am not this person who i believe myself to be which is represented by my name it is too much to gather and practice all this is because he says that we are not fully aware that we are bound that is the crux only when a person is understanding that he is bound will there be any attempt to free himself a person feels himself to be absolutely free what can be uh, done to him at all even if a great uh, avatar purusha or a great mahatma comes in front of him or upanishadic master is there trying to teach everything what can he or anybody do a, a elephant which is very young gets tied to a very small stick uh, with a chain they bind its leg and the stick it really doesn't move if, if at all it moves it moves in that uh, distance where the rope will take it in that circumference it grazes or it does whatever it does now that elephant has grown it has grown into a big animal maybe 10 times its strength and 10 times the size it has grown even then they tie with that same chain and tied to that same uh, small pole it has strength to take away the whole tree actually that elephant now now what is the small pole but that elephant is conditioned in such a way that it will not move that it will still graze in that same circumference and it is bound by that same rope and in that same bamboo and this uh, mahut who is taking care of it is uh, literally he is okay because the elephant will not move that elephant if it believes that this is what its life is all about where it is conditioned like that how can it believe that the elephant is bound actually it is free enough to roam around in jungles it is free enough to go anywhere it can pluck a coconut or banana or anywhere that is found along the way with its own majesty it can do whatever it want but nothing of it it does or it dares to do because it is bound it is bound by that chain and what is interesting is it does not know that it is bound that is the crux the crux of the problem is that if we know that we are bound we will immediately make all efforts to try and free ourselves or at least that agitation or awareness will be there but the tragedy is that we believe ourselves to be free or whatever and this is what swami ji has been addressing of late in many formal and informal classes as uh, the f- the factor of complacency that sets in i do not know with reference to general public but particularly with those of us who are um, studied under him and who are continuing in this line taking this up as a sadhana not when i say not as a field of activity as a sadhana towards uh, moving higher in the in the spiritual disciplines this complacency factor sets in at some point of time uh, we feel everything is fine okay i 
okay if there is a initial stage where there is a lack of money it is not that again you directly work for money but you work on some way that that is taken care of emotional and other aspects are taken care of by family your intellectual curiosity is also taken care of now you are okay with the knowledge you can maybe answer questions also in every form and then uh, that same enthusiasm or initiative with which you started the phys- the spiritual journey which is the opening up of the fire of mumukshatva within us mumukshatva means that uh, that um, a raging fire that desire for liberation which will not make us rest until we reach it you know that fire to know the self that fire to liberate oneself that fire seems to somewhat have subsided the fire will never go but what will happen is it is being submerged under various other things and therefore we take this attitude of everything is fine everything is fine very complacent attitude so he says that this contentment this everything is okay all that you set aside you experience it you try to understand it from the material point of view that's all you, that is a virtue only at that level at your spiritual development level never ever feel content never ever feel satiated i am using it in a positive way never ever feel that complacency so he used that word mumukshatva and complacent in a totally opposite way what is opposite of complacency is this mumukshatva only so keeping that <coughs> fire burning now when will that fire burn is only when we deeply understand that we are actually bound what is this bondage actually we really use this term bondage sarva bandhai pramuchire one word is used in the upanishad and the, that's all it is you don't find this word anywhere else in this upanishad forward or backward sarva bandhai pramuchite he said that's why in gita karma yoga is given in one full chapter in 43 verses but uh, karma is finished in one mantra in isha vasya that's that's the style and that's the grandeur of the upanishads so he says sarva bandhai pramuchite bandha or bondage in fact swami ji has given it in a very not i wouldn't say poetic but in a rhythmic way it's there in the commentary also you can later read, read it he says at all the levels there are certain restrictions that we put upon ourselves that actually defines the bondage the bondage here is a mental rope like that for the elephant we saw a physical rope a mental rope that which does not make us really independent and uh, that which really restricts our movements confines and constricts us believing making us believe that that we are this finite entity with this finite power confined to this finite area that aspect is called as bondage so he says you are bound by the actions of the body you are bound by the appetite of your senses you are bound by the agitations of your mind you are bind, bound by the aspirations of your intellect at all levels at all levels what we see at the body mind intellect every level we are bound by our own sense perceptions see what is bound by sense perceptions once you get attached to a particular sense perception and it is what is playing in your mind the mind when it is tying itself with that you really have no choice to go here or there that thought is preoccupying you in that sense such a person even cannot concentrate on anything but now but that person does not believe that he is bound he doesn't know what that bondage is similarly we are bound to our actions these self created duties upon ourselves which is all created by us and uh, and also not just uh, in uh, this uh, obligatory duties we also have actions which are kamyata which is desire ridden activities various activities like this by doing this actions in a particular way we leave the residual factor in the attainment of that fruit of action that tendency that we leave as a residue forms the seed for the next course of action so helplessly we are bound to this world of action this is karma bandha it is bondage of action therefore if it is not ending in this janma we go into next janma also that's what he says punascha janmantara karma yoga unison with this action so action results of action action results of action this forms a bondage so 
vasanas produce that action action producing the vasanas so there is always a stock of vasanas there that stock of vasanas make us take new births in that new births we do further and further actions so this is bondage at the action level and krishna says karyate hi avashya karma avashya means helpless helplessly we are doing this action because the potential energy is there what to do you just can you try to keep quiet in a place it is just not possible something or the other the gurgling thoughts will come and it will ultimately force you to do something this is the bondage of action then not to talk about emotions and the attachments at the mental level which always create agitations that bondage of all our stupid notions of emotions emotions per se is a virtue when it is directed towards the higher the finer emotion of love is that is what is going to unite us with the self all other emotions which cause this duality is further and further creating more and more weight upon us so a person who is emotionally bound is actually like uh, if you take a physical example which swami ji gives in public lectures also that you bind yourself to this chair you tie yourself with a rope to the chair that you are sitting when you get up the chair also gets up but it's not a comfortable feeling you have to bend yourself or it's a weight that you are carrying and uh, similarly you Uh, bind yourself to the laptop you bind yourself to the mobile whatever it is you are carrying everything all the time and going how much of a physical pain but what we don't realize is we are actually carrying all of them and going in the mind that is what is a mental bondage a invisible rope we feel it's all thoughts it's insubstantial no that is what is actually making our personality heavy so this is the bondage at the uh, emotional level and the greatest bondage comes at the ideological level which is very subtle but it is very powerful very powerful in the sense the attachment or the intensity of the bondage to come over is very very hard you will find some persons who are attached to the ideology of communism even afterwards with all their reason and understand that it is not a proper ideology in accordance with the law of nature let's assume even there the, the once the groove is there in the brain made and when the thought flow has started flowing in that direction however much intelligent they are and they are able to understand also they will not be able to come out of that idea beat any ideology for that matter the aspirations and the ideologies of the intellect and not only that even various certain great goals and other thing that we have which uh, we also recommend and all these goals gain value only if it is in the line of your self realization or self development if it is not so that itself becomes a samsara in this world so aspirations of this intellect so all these things actually make us and what we believe i am fully preoccupied i have no time for this and anyway all this finally everything is good you know there is a good bank balance there is all the children is nice and the family is nice and then we get into a complacency factor or even if it is not nice you will say only this has to be resolved only i have to finish this after that everything is okay or only the daughter's marriage is pending once you do this that's okay or i have to just put up that factory everything is okay after that so we feel that this needs to be adjusted and everything is okay everything is okay all our okay factor that we are talking about is at the level of the bondage of the world only which we don't realize in other words we are being either suffering or being comfortable but we are in a very big prison we don't realize that we are in the prison what we see is in this prison now i have got all facilities i have got i can see tv whatever i want whatever time i have given i have been given all facilities maybe my, i can stay with my family and i have a separate swimming pool all the facilities suppose you are given <coughs> and you are enjoying and being comfortable there but ultimately one day when you come to know with all these facilities also you are bound in a very big wall that is the time we realize that i really do not belong to here from that day if you realize it deeply you will not be able to relish and enjoy whatever has been provided to you your only thought will be that how i will get out of this that is the thought that will because it is not that i am perfectly okay you know everything is comfortable i'll just end with the episode from mahabharata dhritarashtra was extremely attached to the kauravas particularly duryodhana and uh, it was a uh, of course uh, because of his attachment and everything only this happened but at the end of the war you can understand such a attached person has has uh, lost all his hundred sons 
so there is in a extreme state of uh, anger fear uh, you know despair and uh, sorrow everything in that uh, uh, face only outwardly he is showing a smile towards the pandavas and he is asking bhima to come so that he can embrace him and krishna sees the intention of dhritarashtra duryodhana had already made a statue of bhima which he was practicing as uh, gada to hit him so that statue was there so krishna pushes the statue instead of bhima because dhritarashtra is blind and he gives a embrace and that uh, statue breaks into pieces such is the power of dhritarashtra actually and then he uh, repents and cries but he says i had my anger had overpowered me then krishna understood he has come back to his normal senses and he says um this is not real bhima i knew your intentions therefore i sent uh, the statue of bhima uh, now you can embrace real bhima and then they get along very well then what happens is that dhritarashtra is well taken care by the pandavas and after a while after a few years vidra is uh, inquiring with dhritarashtra as to how his uh, life is going on dhritarashtra is saying everything is fine even more than my own sons these pandavas are taking care of me in other words i am getting food at correct intervals they are coming and maybe doing massage to my legs and i am feeling comfortable at all levels vidra says are you not ashamed to say like this the same persons who you tried to kill many times uh, they are now taking care of you which is all fine but at what point of time that you are going to understand uh, and uh, sort of think what is beyond this life dhritarashtra is suddenly woken up that is the last phase of his uh, then the last phase of his life come then only he understands what is it i am doing i was all the time all my life i was fighting for the i had attachment towards the kingdom which i didn't get because of the blindness pandu got it then his sons got then I, my sons also got and the partition everything happened but there is attachment towards the kingdom and attachment towards the son all this was going on and now what i feel everything is all right and i am feeling okay with this then there is a sharp hitting on the head by this vidras words that what are you really doing is this all life all about then what will happen even if after pandavas go probably uh, the next generation they will come and you will happily live like this is there not nothing more to life then only he realizes he goes to forest in uh, both he gandhari and kunti they all go in renunciation they go meaning they take up the higher values so this is what is meant by uh, this complacency again we can understand but when it comes to our own life we need to understand this we can you know we have this duty of grandson we have the duty of building a house we have duty this this that everything actually it's a never ending cycle which will always keep us bound there is never never going to be a, a redemption so when are we going to release ourselves that releasing aspect can come or the thought of it can come only when we understand the depth of our bondage only when we understand that we are deep down in the gutters then we understand i must get out and cleanse myself if i am like a pig comfortable in the life of the gutters it is just like that that's about all so this was what uh, swami ji was telling us in that class so uh, upanishad we can have even great commentaries and we can have the meaning but what it is trying to convey is this that which uh, illumines the world of waking dream and deep sleep that brahman am i thus realizing oneness liberated from the bonds so how we is re- liberated from the bonds is given in the mantra but the prerequisite for that is we have to understand that we are bound we'll continue this discussion more parameshwara yeah regarding the complacency factor this scripture also say that we have a sense of gratitude towards what you have got so if you have a sense of gratitude like on bhakti mark it says uh, that god has given so much thing and all if you have a sense of gratitude against the uh, provider then it automatically points towards that uh, complacency factor then in fact examine your own statement it is against to that complacency correct against means the moment you say i am you have provided me so far thank you that means you are absolutely now the focus is shifting from what you have got to who has given this 
so therefore that supreme entity who has given this if your focus turns towards that then you are uh, in other words that infinite has provided you certain finite things now your focus is towards that getting that infinity itself so therefore the whole thing changes towards that point so that's why i'm saying that uh, complacency when we use the word complacency that contentment factor let it be there at the material level it is a virtue and it must be there but at the spiritual level you should never be complacent till you get that infinite because, because all the provision whatever you get is going to be only finite but i am not satisfied till i get that infinite thing that is a fact so, yeah so does guilt coming first or complacency the guilt again works against you know uh, the the strong desire that you know, that mukshipra feeling comes on the moment you start having the guilt feeling so that again becomes a challenge no no why are you bringing in guilt here what, what is, when do you get a guilt because then you start realizing all your drawbacks no no what is defined when you when you get that guilt what is that feeling that you are talking about as guilt so when you start uh, walking on this journey so obviously you start realizing all your drawbacks which you said several time when you Hmm. Hmm. First, correct, so, correct. So that reduces your mumukshatva thing. Ha ha. No, that will not reduce the mumukshatva. You cannot <laughs> d- dwell on that more. <coughs> See, the past has it will come out. The when you purge, all the negativities will come out. That is when we say that you need to have that objectivity. In fact, this mantra and the next mantra, they he is going to clearly talk about that objectivity only. Objectivity is to keep that negativity not affecting you. so therefore past is past that you cannot do anything uh, at the same time you have learned certain lessons then move ahead with it so that will not uh, hamper the mumukshatva in fact when you have that uh, feeling that my past has been like this and i am bound because of that let me at least not do anything from now on to get myself more entangled that will keep that mumukshatva burning even more as such we'll conclude with the bhajan sir
Shanti, 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 Shanti.